In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please sit. This miracle is the only one that appears in all four of the Gospels, and I love preaching on it because there's so much in there. My general approach to this Gospel is, is one of two things. The first is to ask you how many miracles there are in this Gospel. And you know always that it's a trick question because you know that I always say, well, there's one more than you think because the first miracle is that all of these people were coming to see Jesus and what he could do for them. The second thing that I will say about this gospel is it demonstrates what we are called to do as Christians to help the world. Because it is very easy for us to say, look at people who are homeless, look at people who are hungry and go, well, there's just so many people who need our help, who need our support, that we can't possibly help them all, and so therefore we do nothing. But what this gospel shows us is that if we do the small good in front of us, then that small good will be amplified by God around the world. It's a very practical thing, because when people see you helping others, they too will help others. That's the practical outworking of the Holy Spirit in the world. But today, I want to concentrate on the final few verses. The people seeing this sign that he had given said, this really is the prophet who is to come into the world. Jesus, who could see they were about to come and take him by force and to make him king, escaped back to the hills by himself. Why is this tagged on to the end of this amazing miracle? Well, it's because it's telling us that the people of the time saw Jesus at this point as the fulfillment of scriptures, as the fulfillment of prophecy in Deuteronomy. Here was the Messiah, the king who was going to come and lead them from oppression. Jesus was the king who was going to come and stand on the neck of the evil, of the evil Roman Empire and throw them out. That is how the people saw Jesus at this point. They saw him as their literal king. They saw him as the person who would turn away the overzealous rulers. But this is the same crowds who not very long afterwards were screaming, crucify him, crucify him. These same people, the people who were there at the feeding of the 5,000, and when Jesus was doing what they wanted him to do, he was their king. But the moment Jesus offered something different, something more difficult to accept, the crowd turned. And it was no longer, here is the prophet who is to come into the world, but crucify him. How fickle the reaction of the world around us. And there are two things to take from that. The first is that if you seek approval of the world and not of God, then the approval of the world will turn on you. The moment you do something that the world doesn't like, you've had it. And the second thing is to think about, and this is the crux of the homily today, is to think about your relationship with Jesus Christ. This crowd was loyal because it was a bought loyalty. They were loyal to Jesus at this point and he could do no wrong because they had expectations of him that he was fulfilling. Are we any different to that crowd? When we want comfort in sorrow, when we want strength in difficulty, when we want peace in turmoil, when we want help in the face of depression, there is no one so wonderful as Jesus to turn to. And he soothes us and he heals us. We open our hearts to him. And we ask him to be in our lives. This really is the prophet who has come into the world. But when Jesus comes to us with a demand of sacrifice in our lives, when Jesus comes to us with the offer of a cross to carry, what's our reaction then? Will we have nothing to do with him then? 
Will we turn like the crowds turned and scream, crucify him? Because he is asking us to do something that is hard, that is difficult, that the world will not approve of? When we examine our hearts in those moments, we will find that we love Jesus not for who he is, but for what we can get out of him. When we appeal to Christ, it is for strength to go on. It is for strength to go on with our own schemes, our own ideas, our own plans. It never seems to be for humility and obedience. Is our prayer, Lord, give me strength to do what I want to do? Or is it, Lord, give me the strength to do what you want me to do? That crowd would have followed Jesus anyway at the point at which he fed the 5,000. But they abandoned him when he offered them the cross. It's a hard gospel. It's a hard question. And I don't underestimate how difficult it is to leave church today and to ask yourself, do I offer myself to Jesus? Or do I demand that Jesus does what I tell him to do? Amen.